If you are sending out marketing emails for your business, then chances are you've already run into some issues at some point getting your emails through to the recipient's inboxes. It's really common for overzealous spam filters to send anything they don't like the look of that could be a marketing email into the junk folder. The job of a spam filter is to remove any unwanted spam emails. But it's pretty common though for your marketing emails to people who've asked to receive them get swept under and filtered away. This is a real problem for email marketers because if people aren't seeing your mailer, then they aren't going to interact with it or convert into sales. Help is at hand though. Luckily, there are steps we can take to fix this. So if you'd like to make sure that your emails are hitting the inbox, then watch the rest of this video as we're going to outline five points that play a major part in your delivery. A spam filter will read the subject header line and the body text of your email. It will screen the contents of this text against a database of spam type phrases. These phrases are typically associated with text seen in unsolicited emails previously. This does mean though that if a spam filter is making its inbox placement decision based on the inclusion of any sales related words in your email, then you are running a significant risk of ending up in the junk if your mailer has a quantity of these phrases. So, Prior to sending out your email, it's worth removing any words or phrases that look overtly sales orientated. So this could be promotion, discount, free, so those kind of words. Alternatively, to thoroughly clean your text, use an online service that will screen your text using the same spam filter algorithms that the big boys do. Yes, this is a shameless plug, the Email Blaster will do this for you. If you're selling a product or service, then the chances are that you are using images to help present it in your email. Not just product images though, you may be using your company logo and branding in an image form. Well, the bad news is that spam filters are on the lookout for image-based mailers. They can class your mailer as spam for the inclusion of over use of images. No, it doesn't. But it does mean though, there is a little bit of tweaking to do to make sure that our mailer doesn't end up in the junk if we use images. One of the main things that spam filters are looking for is large file sizes. Images typically have quite large file sizes. So what we need to do is make sure that the file size is as small as possible. Ideally underneath 200 kilobytes. There are some great web-based services such as tinypng.com that will do all this for you. You also need to make sure the amount of images that you're using are counterbalanced with the amount of text. For example, make sure that your mailer contains more text than images. Hardly any text and lots of images is often a real red flag to a spam filter. Again, another big one. The email address that you are using to send your email marketing from plays an important part in what the spam filter is looking at. We know by now that a spam filter is looking to target an email that it thinks might be unsolicited or a marketing email. They're looking at the send from address. If you are using a mailbox such as marketing app, sales app, or even worse, no reply app, then this alone is often enough to trigger a spam filter. The send from address plays a huge part and luckily optimizing it is a real quick and easy win to put this in place. With your next email marketing campaign, if you're currently using a generic address such as marketing at as your send from address, try changing it to a personalized email address such as your name at. Try this and watch your open rates increase as more people will start seeing your email than ever before. If you're sending out email marketing using software to create your broadcasts, then this one is really important. Your software will make sure that your emails appear as being from you by setting your email address as a send from address. They will, however, be sent via your service provider, but that part isn't visible. A spam filter will be able to see that whilst your emails appear as being from you, they're really being sent from your service provider's network. So domain verification entails adding a small bit of text to your own domain name behind the scenes. This adds a seal of authenticity. A spam filter can see this and it helps provide the necessary comfort to pass security measures employed by modern spam filters. When your recipient spam filter receives your email, it can also see your send reputation. This is a percentage score based and calculated on your previous activity. If the score is low, then this results in a fast pass straight to the junk folder. 
The score is calculated by organisations such as senderscore.org. The factors that make up this score are previous spam complaints, people marking your email as spam, reads, clicks and bounces. So for example, if bounces and spam complaints are high and your reads and clicks are low, then this will result in a low score. Controversially, if your bounces and spam complaints are low and your reads and clicks are much higher, then this results in a higher score. So the fix here is to clean any dead addresses from your list and only send emails to people who've asked to receive them and make sure that your content is fresh and relevant to your target audience. A strong sender score always converts to good inbox placement. Okay, so we've outlined five quick points that you can implement with your email marketing that will make a significant difference to your inbox placement. And this will mean higher engagement, higher sales and higher conversions. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Be sure to drop us a like and subscribe. Um, and if you don't already, be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out the other videos in the series.